Well, praise God. I'm talking to you uh, this month about the seven keys to success, or I could say the seven keys to biblical success. And, uh, you know, I think we all are looking to be successful in God. And uh, so last week we talked about, I talked about one of the keys. I was trying to get through some of the keys, more, more of the keys, and I'm going to try to get through them this morning. Uh, but last week, if you weren't here, or maybe you were, just a reminder, the first key, and each key starts with a W, and uh, is worship. And so just a little recap, we need to be worshipers, amen? Not just Sunday morning, you know, some people say, oh yeah, I worship on Sunday morning. But no, we need to be worshipers all through the week. We need to acknowledge God in all that we do, amen? And we need to start worshiping Him and, and worship is more than just an external outward expression. It's really worship is really of the heart. Amen. And so even Jesus said to some of the Pharisees, he says they worship God, you know, on the outside, but their hearts were far from him. And, and our hearts need to be close to God. Amen. And so really everything that we do, we can turn it into worship. Amen. You can, you can turn your service Admit, you know, ministering to people, witness as an act of worship. Everything we do is a, is a seed, I believe, of worship. I believe we should get up in the morning and, and worship God. and thank. How many people do that when they get up in the morning? They just thank God for, for you know, acknowledge God, amen? And uh, I know it's a lot of times when I don't put God first place, you know, during the week, uh, my days don't go that well. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, it seems like things are going wrong, and it's like, man, I should have prayed this morning. I, you know, and then you pray in the middle of the day when you're in the storm, right? But we need to pray before the storm comes. Glory to God. And so we really need to be people of worship. But another thing I hit on was that we need to be very careful of idols. We don't want to be putting anything before God. And so, you know, it's easy to have things take, you know, uh, up residence in our life that we actually... It's easy for us to be more focused on other things besides the Lord. But you know what? When we start focusing on other things and we're not focusing on the Lord, then I think what happens is that the enemy tries to get us to focus on the things that aren't right or things that aren't working. And the enemy's trying to put fear on some of us, as if, you know, put anxieties. But I know what the Bible says. You probably know what the Bible says too. It says that they who keep their minds stayed on Christ shall be in perfect peace. So, you know, regardless of what might be going on in your life, what kind of turmoil, if you stay focused on Christ, if you stay focused on His Word, then He's going to keep you in perfect peace. You believe that? And so that's wonderful. So, uh, so the second W on, uh, on the seven keys of success is Word. Word. In other words, the Word of God. And so, you know, in Hebrews, let's look at Hebrews 4. The Word of God is powerful. And, uh, you know, we need to understand the power of God's Word. And I think that's the reason. I think a lot of Christians don't understand how powerful God's Word is. And I think sometimes we discount the, you know, studying the Bible, reading the Word on a daily basis. We sometimes discount that. Um, we think that all we really need sometimes is Sunday morning or maybe maybe a gospel program during the week. But you need to get into the Word. You need the Word of God. You know, the Word is powerful. And so here in verse 12 of Hebrews 4, it says, For the Word of God is living and powerful. So the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give an account. So we see here that the Word of God is actually, it's living, it's active, it's God-breathed. You know, I like Jesus, and you know, it's interesting about Jesus was, you know, it, it, he, he would speak the word, and he would draw crowds, and people wanted to hear his words, because his words provided life. And so people loved to listen to Jesus, 
And, you know, even his disciples loved to listen to him. And I remember that Jesus ministered a message. And sometimes some messages that even Jesus ministered, sometimes the crowd did not like. What, Pastor? Are you, I thought the crowd loved all Jesus' messages. Well, the first message that Jesus preached was about the, the grace of God, about the year of Jubilee. He was talking about Isaiah 61, first, first sermon that he preached, that this is a year of Jubilee and the blessings are here. And the Pharisees wanted to kick, throw him off of a cliff. Amen. Because he said, the blessings here and the blessings on me. Amen. And so, you know, so sometimes when Jesus preached, people didn't appreciate it. Jesus also ministered about that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. That sounds like a cannibalistic message there. That's not one that you want to have a five, you know, week series on. And they thought that he was talking about cannibalism. And, but he wasn't talking about that. He was actually talking about you need to, you know, eat my flesh. You know, Jesus, in, in, in the Gospel of John, in one, it says Jesus is the Word. He's the Word made flesh. And he came and he dwelt among us. So Jesus is the Word. He's the Word made flesh. So, so what he was saying was eating his Word was really what he was saying was meditate on his Word. In other words, start thinking about the Word of God. Make it be a part of you. Is this helping anybody today? And we need to make the Word of God a part of us. And, and so we need to do that. And, and we see that Jesus said, you must drink my blood and eat my flesh. Really talking about the Word of God. Really, you know, the Bible actually says this, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You know, God's Word is good. Amen. It is awesome. And it gives life to those who receives it. You know, you're here today. You're here to receive more life from God's Word. And as I minister the Word in power and demonstration, I'm telling you, God is moving amongst you, revealing truth, enlightening your spirit, glory to God. So as Jesus ministered the Word, and He said, you must eat my flesh and drink uh, my blood, the Bible says that a lot of people that were following left Him. And so it just, it boiled down. It could have been hundreds of people that were there when he said that. And then all of them started leaving, except for the 12 that, that hung out. And he said to them, are you going to leave too? And then Peter said something that was really interesting. Peter says, uh, you know, we, we're not going to leave because you're the only one with the words of life. Amen. They understood that. Maybe there's some things that you don't understand in the Bible. Maybe there's some things that, you know, it's making your head you know, tilt every once in a while. Hey, listen, don't let that affect your faith. You know, God will give you knowledge. He'll give you wisdom. You know, there's things that I didn't understand years ago, and, and it's progressive. God's Word is progressive. The longer we stay in the Word of God, the more we're going to understand about God. Amen? The more we're going to receive from God. So, 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 God's word is spirit and life. And, and we see here that, I don't know about you, but we are, we are growing. And I do know about you. We're all growing in God. And there's things that we need that, that are negative. Anybody has any negative tendencies in here? Anybody dealing with any issues in here? And, and I don't know about you, but when the word of God says it's sharp like a two-edged sword, I believe the word of God will, will cut those negative things off of our life. Are we dealing, you know, if you're dealing with any kind of insecurities, you're dealing with any kind of weaknesses, God's word will cut that off. If you're dealing, let me preach over here. If you're dealing, if you're dealing with maybe sickness, how many people are dealing with physical ailments in here? You know, God's word is, a, is like a scalpel. It will cut off those physical things that are coming against you, whatever that physical thing is. I remember I used to have allergies. I don't have them anymore. I'm redeemed from allergies. The Word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who He has redeemed from the hand of... You are redeemed today. Some of you, that enemy is trying to make you think you're still bound up in this and bound up in that. No, you're free. Because the Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And some of you might be saying, well, you know, that's nice for you to say, but I'm still dealing with it. 
I'm still dealing with this weakness. I, I'm still dealing with this sickness. I, I'm still dealing with it. Why, is, why hasn't things changed? Because you ha, you, you're not truly believing it yet. It hasn't become a reality in, in your heart. You see, you can have a lot of head knowledge, but it's more than head knowledge that's going to get the job done. You've got to have heart knowledge. You got, it has to be of the heart. Faith is of the heart. Amen. It's not of the head. Amen. That's why you can read a scripture and you can say, well, I like that. I know it says that I'm a new creation in Christ. I know it says that old things are passed away. But how come it feels like I'm still the old creature? How come it feels like I'm still the old man? You know, have you ever felt that way? You know, but the Bible says we're new creation. We have to, we have to get our minds illuminated to the truth of God's word. And the more that we get our minds illuminated to the truth of God's Word, the more the truth of God's Word is going to sink down into our hearts, and pretty soon we're walking out the truth. Amen? Amen? You're not who you think you are. You, you are who God says that you are. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so the enemy is trying to discourage people in this day, trying to get people downcast. But I'm going to say, be encouraged. Amen. Be encouraged. Start meditating on who you are in Christ. You know, it's interesting. So, so the Word of God will cut those negative things off of you. You know, what the church really need more than anything is renewed minds. We need our minds renewed to the truth of God's Word of who we are, what we have, and what we can do in Christ. Amen. Not what we can do in a crisis, but I will tell you what to do in a crisis. Speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. You have authority. You have the power. The Word of God is powerful. And it's only powerful when you're speaking it out of your mouths. A lot of times we, we don't speak the Word of God. And I'm going to say you need to speak the Word. You remember what the centurion uh, said to Jesus? The centurion came to him. And said, you know, my servant lays sick uh, at home. And uh, if you would just, you know, if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, I haven't heard of such great faith. I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel. Of course, his disciples standing around there too. And so he praised the centurion. And the centurion understood that the word of God, not just read, but spoken. How do you defeat negative thoughts? How do you defeat these things that creep in? Does anybody ever ever have a negative thought in here? Do you ever, is the enemy ever trying to tell you you're not going to make it? Uh, the enemy trying to tell you you're not going to, you know, you're not going to move any further in, into God and the things of God? The enemy's constantly working. The enemy's working. It's interesting to me, I was studying this out, and you can look at uh, the Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, you'll see that Jesus was getting water baptized by John. And, and, and he got water baptized. And the Bible says that there, a voice came out of heaven when Jesus came up out of the water and said that this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. So I'm going to say this. If you're in Christ today, if you're in God today, and you're endeavoring to walk after God, God is well pleased with you. And so what is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to make you think that God doesn't care about you, that God has left you. Has the devil ever played that one on you? Has the devil ever made you think that you don't even have salvation? I'm glad my salvation isn't based on how good I am. I'm glad my salvation is based on how good he is. I'm glad my salvation isn't based on my good works, but I'm glad it's based on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. I'm glad that when I mess up that Jesus didn't say, that's it, I'm out of here. Because the Bible says when we're unfaithful, He remains faithful. I'm glad the Bible says don't feed on your faithfulness, but feed on His faithfulness. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God is faithful no matter what it looks like. Well, pastor, I'm still dealing with this situation. God is faithful no matter what it looks like. Well, pastor, I've been speaking the word and I haven't seen anything yet. God is faithful. He'll watch over his word to perform it. What we need to start doing is speaking some word out of our mouths. I, know, I notice what the enemy tries to do with me. He tries to get me a feeling. Give me a feeling. And it's normally a bad feeling. 
It's not even a thought. It's just I feel, and I just, oh man, I just feel mighty low, you know. Have you ever just had a bad feeling? You may not even have had a bad thought, but just a bad feeling. And what the enemy wants you to do is speak negative out of your mouth. Yes, oh, I feel like I'm not going to make it. What? Don't say that. The Lord says he'll never leave you. Or Don't say those things. I feel like that we're always going to be stuck in this. Don't say that. Amen. You're giving the problem precedence over your life. No, give the promise precedence over your life. Start speaking the promises of God's word. Are you, I'm telling you, that's where the power is at. Jesus is coming back with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. And we're just like him. In other words, we're called to create. Your words can be creative or they can be destructive. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to speak creative words out of my mouth. I'm not going to let the enemy get me to say negative things. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? It's easy to speak negative. It's easy to speak the circumstances. You know, when, G when God was creating the universe, it's interesting when you read the book of Genesis, you'll find that it says, and God said, and he made this, and God said, and he made that, and God said. It seemed like it was being redundant because God created everything by the power of his spoken word. Except for us, he formed us out of the dirt. He didn't speak us into existence. He created us with his own hands. That's what makes us special. We're made in the image of God. You are special today. You are one of a kind. God has created you in his image and in his likeness. I'm telling you, that's why the devil hates us so much, because we look like God. If you want to see what God looks like, look in the mirror. Make sure you comb your hair first. No, I'm kidding. But look in the mirror. You are the exact image of God. Is this helping anybody today? Or am I just preaching myself happy? So anyway, uh, look at this. So, so we see here that Jesus was, you know, he was water baptized. And we can look at this in, in the book of uh, Matthew and uh, chapter 3 and also in chapter 4. And we're going to look at this because sometimes when we're in the wilderness, uh, the enemy will speak to us. Most of the time he does speak to us like he spoke to Jesus, and he spoke to Jesus in the wilderness. And, you know, he, his whole goal is to discourage us. And so we see here in chapter 4, it says here, chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 1 says, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had, somebody say faith test. Faith test. See, we're going to have faith tests. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, you know, the enemy is going to come in and see how much you really believe God's Word. Do you really believe God's Word? Do you really believe that God's Word says, by Jesus stripes you're healed? Or do you believe that symptom more than God's Word? Do you really believe God's Word when, when He says that uh, the joy of the Lord is your strength? Do you believe that? Or are you going to stay in the mully grubs? That means... Stay negative. Okay. And uh, no, no, we got to believe the word of God. We got to speak the word of God. And so here, here, this is interesting. It says that Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. I'm going to say this. If you want to disconnect your, 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 the, your body influences and your emotions to the world system, learn to fast every once in a while. Learn to start fasting and remove, you know, just fast for you know, a day and watch things start changing in your life. See, the enemy wants us to be emotionally motivated. Do you know that? The devil wants us to be motivated by our feelings. Listen, we got to walk by faith and not by feelings. And, that's, and the enemy's causing a lot of Christians to run into a ditch because of their feelings. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. Amen? And so here, he, Jesus fasted, really, I believe, to disconnect himself to the natural world so he can be in tune, more in tune to God. And I know what some people say, well, Pastor, it seems like I'm more in tune to the devil than God. <laughs> it seems like I, I'm more tempted. I don't really seem to, you know, it seems like I'm always in the fight, in the battle. Listen, we just got to get our minds back on God. The enemy is trying to get our mind on the circumstances, on the storms of life. But we need to keep our mind stayed on him. And once we keep our mind stayed on Christ, we'll be in perfect peace, perfect health, perfect wholeness. Are you listening to me this morning? 
You're going to have to fight in this, in this faith fight. It's, it's a fight every day sometimes. We're going to have to learn to fight in God. You're going to have to learn to fight. And so, and so the best way to fight is on your knees. Amen? And so here he fasted. And now when the tempter came uh, to him in verse 3, and he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we see here that the enemy, his, his tactics are always the same. And, you know, he was really trying to work against Jesus' identity of who he was. In other words, Jesus is the Son of God. And, and the devil says, if you be the Son of God, are you sure you're the Son of God? Are you really sure? Like the enemy will work on you. Are you sure you're a Christian? Are you sure you're saved? Are, do you, are you sure you got, you got your healing? Are you sure you're walking in prosperity? Are you sure you got it? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? The enemy will try to get you to, to question who you are in Christ. Has, has the enemy ever done that to you? Make you think that even though you received Christ, that you're still a lost sinner on your way to hell? The enemy will try to put that on some of us. But listen, again, I will, I will focus back. We need to focus back on Christ. Focus, our relationship should always focus back on Jesus and on His Word. Are you listening to me this morning? And so here, He says, man should not live by bread alone. It's interesting that Jesus spoke something. He spoke it out of his mouth. I believe he spoke it. You know, the enemy may have came to him, and he could have been in a dollar different ways. It says the enemy spoke to him. He, the enemy speaks to me a lot of times through my mind. Just because you have thoughts coming in that are wrong thoughts don't, doesn't mean that they're originating from you. Can I say it again? Just because you have negative thoughts or a, or a uh, thought of temptation doesn't mean that that thought is from you. It could be the enemy tempting you. Are you here? You know, it's interesting to me because, you know, in the, in the Word of God, in the book of Revelation, you know, uh, the devil's going to be taken out of here for a thousand years. You. Did you know that? Yeah. And so, you know, he's going to be bound up. And you know what? There's not going to be any crime. There's not going to be any negative. People aren't going to be missing it. Why? Because the devil's not around to tempt you. And the Bible says that he's going to be released again and, uh, and be released out because there are people that haven't, been tested by the devil, and, and a lot of these people are going to believe his lies and not make it. See, this is our testing time right here. Right here, you know, you know, it's the overcomer that makes it to heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? It's the overcomer. You're an overcomer. You're, you're, it, it's the over, that, oh, it's overcoming all the weaknesses of the flesh. What the enemy's trying to tell us to do is quit, drop out, don't move forward. Yeah, this is our test right here, people. We're being tested every day. Are we going to follow God or are we going to follow our own inclinations? Are we going to follow God or are we going to go with the losing crowd and leave God? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? I don't know about you, but for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, the, you know, some people say the book, the Bible is the book of destiny. I say it's the book of decisions. Choose this day who you serve. And we need to learn to serve God with all of our hearts. Amen. Are you hearing me today, saints? Yeah. And so here, it says here that it is written. Notice that Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we're not here to live by, by just our natural, the natural resources that we receive on a daily basis, but we're here to really, we live off the Word of God. The Word of God is your faith food. Yes. Amen? We, the Word of God is what we feed our spirits. The Word of God. We feed it, and that's what makes us strong in God. So we see here that Jesus actually spoke something. When a negative thought comes in, you need to speak a positive thought out of your mouth. Sometimes we just pull the job and we go in silence and not say a word for a week. You know, that doesn't do any good, just, just being quiet. Some of you might be saying, well, I'm not saying anything negative. Yeah, but are you saying anything positive? Are you here to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not speaking, I'm not speaking against anybody. Yeah, but are you thinking negative about people? 
you know, your thoughts is just as powerful. Jesus heard their thoughts. Jesus knew people's thoughts. You know, even our thinking can either bring us down or bring us up. That's why the Bible says we need to meditate on the word. We need to meditate on it until we become strong. You know, that's what, that's what it says in, in Joshua 1.8. It says meditate on the word and you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. But, and as we meditate on the word, we got to walk out the word of God, just like Jesus was walking it out, even though that he was tempted of the devil. And then notice again, the, the devil has said, if you be the son of God. But the devil took him up into a holy city, verse 5, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, there he goes again, throw yourself down for his written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. It's interesting to me, as that was Psalms 91, 12, that the devil was quoting. You know, the devil can quote scripture. He can quote scripture to you, but he likes to quote scripture out of context. He can quote scripture to you. You know, if, if you are hell-bent, and going the worldly way and, and believing that it's okay for you to go the worldly way even though you have a covenant with God, he's going he's gonna to give you some scriptures that will let you know that, that, uh, that, God's, that God's not going to punish you for that or that you're not going to come under any kind of judgment for that. Or you're, The enemy can give you scriptures, but they're always out of context and it doesn't flow with the rest of the Bible. People are trying to make homosexuality, uh, uh, it, it's supposed to be, you know, they're trying to make it, it's, it's okay in the Bible. I don't know how they can find that. But they'll try to figure out ways and pull this scripture out in context and take this and say, well, Jesus never really talked about it. So, you know, no, you know, it's, it's very clear. Jesus made that, you know, it, the apostle Paul, you know, talked about it. And, and he said, and Jesus talked about marriage being between a man and a woman, that's original intent of marriage. Amen? But you can try to figure out a way to make it sound differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And, and go on the wayward path of destruction. I'm not going on the wayward path of destruction. I'm going on the wayward path of life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And even though you try to go against God's word, your own heart will convict you. I said this before, I'll say it again. You will have a heart attack. Your, your heart will attack you. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit's not here to, to condemn you. The Holy Spirit's here to help you. To, to, to convict you, to, to get you to the next level. He's our helper, our standby. Our, his, uh, he's our very present help in time of need. And so we see here, the, the Holy Spirit will give us a scripture that we need in the time that we need it. And that's what we need to speak the word of God. Somebody say, I'm more than, more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, when the enemy is trying to make you think you can, you need to have some of these pillar scriptures in your life. When things aren't going right, you need to have that scripture that says, God causes all things to work for good to those who love him and called according to his purposes. Well, if you're walking you know, towards God and maybe some negative things. God's going to work some things out. God's going to cause things, going to work good in your life. When Joseph was, was uh, you know, he, he, he was a man that was sold out to God. He was thrown into a pit by his brothers. He was doing the right things. He had a vision. He had a vision of who he was. He, he had a vision of, uh, of what God, that God was exalting him to a certain position, you know, and, and he had, that vision kept him. You know, you are not uh, the, the, the worm struggling in the dirt. No, you're the head and not the tail. You're the lender and not the borrower. We need to start speaking these things out of our mouths. Joseph was a blessed man. Even though he was in prison, he was a prosperous man. And listen, we're prosperous in God. And so we got to believe that. We got to believe, we got to start hooking into this idea that God has already blessed us. Not that you're trying to get a blessing, but you're already blessed. Yes, yes, you are, you're walking in the blessing. You're walking in the blessings of, is this helping anybody today? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? We need to start believing that. See, see, you couldn't keep, you can't keep a godly man or woman down. Because a god man or woman will always rise to the top, no matter what it looks like. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what the circumstance, a god, it may look like you're cursed of God. It may look like nothing's working. Your finances are cursed. Your health is cursed. But you're going to rise to the top. Jesus looked cursed on the cross. He looked like man, a cursed man on the cross. He looked bad. It looked bad for Jesus. But God was ready to set him up for the biggest exaltation of, of all eternity. Exalted above all. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? It looked like Jesus was cursed on the cross, but Jesus was setting him up for the blessing. Or God was setting Jesus up for the blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So no matter what you might be feeling like, you might feel like you're cursed today, but I'm going to say you're blessed. You are blessed. Don't go by what it feels like or what it looks like. Go with what the Word of God says. you got the blessing in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? You And you're going to have to speak it out. You're going to have to start speaking some things out. You're going to have to start getting some promises of God's Word and speaking it out. Amen. That's where the power's at. The power has to come off these pages into your mouth. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? This year will be one of the greatest years of your life, if you believe it. Start speaking it. Yes, you may be encountering some trials, some tribulations, some problems, some temptations, but I'm saying and I'm prophesying to you today, this is going to be a great year for you this year. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And it says here, and uh, so, so Jesus, so we see here that the devil was working against Jesus on really his identity, and so we see that the devil knows some word. And then Jesus said, it is written again, or it is also written, you should not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus had understanding of the word. He was well balanced of the word. Jesus is the word made flesh. The devil couldn't get over on him. Listen, the devil works on ignorant Christians. Works on Christians that don't know the Bible. You know, when we lack the knowledge of the Word of God, the enemy's out there to steal, kill, and destroy. He's looking whom he may devour. And he's devouring uh, Christians that are ignorant of what the Bible says. And he's, he's devouring those type of Christians. You can't be a lazy Christian and win in God. You've got to be diligent in standing with the truth, speaking the truth, believing the truth. We must be diligent. We can't be slack in our walk with Christ. Are you hearing me today? we got to be diligent in getting the Word of God out. It's getting the Scriptures of God out. That's why we have our confession sheets on healing, our confession sheets on who we are in Christ. We need to start speaking some of these things. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? We're more than conquerors in Christ. We need to start speaking these things and believing it. Glory to God. And so here, Jesus said, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. He knew the word. And then we, we had here, uh, uh, the devil here says again in verse 8, The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. See, see listen. The devil, it was given to the devil when Adam and Eve, you know, they... They bowed their knee to Satan and they, they committed high treason. And so what happened was Adam and Eve gave them this planet, basically. Gave it over to the devil. He's the little God of this world. The Apostle Paul says the devil is actually running a lot of this world. God's not running it yet. God's running heaven, but he's not running this world. That's why he has you and me as Christians to advance the kingdom of God, to bring the kingdom into the world system. That's why we're here. We're here to get the kingdom of God in every area that we're at, in our workplace, in our families, wherever God has called us to be, we're called to get the kingdom in. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying today? You are anointed, you are appointed by God. You're, you're not cursed. You're blessed. Amen. The devil is a liar. All he can do is give you a lie. 
And we got to overcome those lies with the truth of God's Word by speaking who we are, what we have, and what we can do in Christ. I know I must sound like a broken record a lot of times, but I don't think we're doing it like we need to. If we're still dealing with discouragement or oppression or depression or we're still dealing with any kind of illnesses, we need to speak the Word. Amen. Believe God's Word. Listen, again, I used to have allergies. I don't have them anymore. Every springtime I used to sneeze, and I, but I started speaking the Word. I don't have allergies anymore. Thank God Jesus Christ heals me. I don't have allergies anymore. Achoo, excuse me. No, I'm kidding. But are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? I don't get allergies. I don't get sick. I like what my dad would say. My dad had an operation on his neck years ago, and, uh, and he had, had a, a, a delicate operation done on the back of his neck on his spine, and they said that he would have headaches all his life. And, you know, my dad uh, doesn't get headaches, and he would always say to me, I don't get headaches. And, you know, I've never seen him take a pill for a headache, even when I was being a headache to him. No, I'm kidding, but... Uh, but, you know, he, he's, you know, and he just confesses, oh, no, I just don't get headaches. I just don't get headaches. Some of us might need to speak those kind of things. I just don't get depressed. I just don't get in fear. I, I just don't get headaches. I, oh, you hear what? Well, whatever your weakness might be. For some, it could be depression. For others, it could be, uh, I, you know, don't say that, you, oh, I, I tend to overeat. No, no, you undereat. Start speaking the, what, what you believe in God to do in your life, and you see God do it in Jesus' name. You believe that? So we have to speak the end. You know, Jesus always spoke the end result. You know, if, you, if, you want, if you read the Gospels, you'll find that Jesus would say who he was. He said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, you know, I am the great shepherd. He would say who he was. Then he would say, you know, uh, what he was, what he was going to do. We're going to the other side. We're going here. He would speak the end result. Are you hear what I'm saying to you today? We need to learn to speak the end result. We need to start learning that, hey, we're blessed. That's where, that's where we're at. That's where we're going. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today, saints? And then Jesus said, you know, it's interesting to me. Jesus spoke the right word and said again, you should not tempt the Lord your God. And then, then the, the, the then Jesus said when the devil tried to tempt him with the world, which Jesus was going to get going to the cross. This is what I see here. The devil knows what you want, and he will try to get you to do a shortcut to get it. In other words, the devil knows that you want, you know, you, you may be believing to get out of debt and have some prosperity. And the enemy wants you to try to shortcut your way to that. And listen, you can't shortcut your way to the blessings of God. You're going to have to walk out the word of God. In, in other words, the enemy will try to get some of us to compromise to get some things. And listen, what you compromise to get, you'll lose. Amen. We can't compromise in the Word of God. We can't compromise the truth of God's Word. See, see the, the person that's blessed is the person that's not just a hearer of God's Word, but a doer of God's Word. Amen. That's the reason why we get the Word of God in us. As we get the Word in us, we start meditating on it. As the psalmist says, Thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. You can say it this way. Thy word I have hid in my heart so I can walk in the word with thee. Because the more you put it in, you won't, you won't be able, able to help it, but do it. Amen. You start putting the word of God in, you're going to start doing it. You start putting the love chapter in. Some of us are dealing, uh, are struggling with walking in love. You start putting the love chapter in. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love is patient, love is kind. You start putting that in, and pretty soon you don't have to make yourself be nice. Some of you old crusty Christians out here, you will end up being nice. That's right. That's right. You don't have to try to be nice. No, no, you start putting that in you, and you won't be a crusty Christian anymore. Man, you'll be a fun, love, loving Christian. Not a Christian that's stuck, that's like a stick stuck in the mud. Not a Christian that's a bump on the log. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? As you put that word in you, put that love word in you, pretty soon you'll walk in love. Like, man, I'm being nice. Man, that's not my nature, you know? Man, I, you know, everybody has not you know, it's that anger issue. Well, you know, I'm Italian, so Italians get angry. You know, I'm Indian, so I get angry. It seems like every culture gets angry. Well, you know, I'm a Scottish, and you know how Scottish are. You know, I got Scottish in my blood. 
And every, everybody seems to be angry. Every, every, you know, I'm, I'm Hispanic, so, you know, we, we're hot-blooded, you know. Hot-blooded, check it and see, you know. And so, are you hearing what I'm saying today? No, man, you're a new creation in Christ. I'm dead. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ. As you start putting the word of God in you, and you start and you start speaking the promises of God's word. First, your worship. Then number two, you put the promises and you start speaking the promises of God's word that you are a conqueror, that you are victorious, that you are set free. You just keep putting that in, putting it in, putting it in, and pretty soon I am set free. Pretty soon I am a prosperous man. Pretty you start saying it, and it won't be just coming out of your head, it'll be coming out of your heart. And that's where the power's at. There's no power with it just coming out of your head. It has to come out of your heart. That's why, the enemy, that's why some of us are speaking negative and we seem to speak more negative than the word. Why do we do that? Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth leaks. I mean the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. What's in your heart? What have you been sowing in the soil of your heart? Are you sowing the lies of the devil in your heart? Are you allowing those lies to sink deep and to be, be grown up? And you know it grows up when you're speaking those negative things. No, no. Allow the word of God, which is seed, to be planted in your heart. And, let it, uh, and, and water it with praise and thanksgiving and confession. And watch it start growing out. And you become like a mighty tree. And people will sit under you to hear the wisdom that's coming out of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. Say, I'm, go I'm, going I'm going forth in God. This is the day, is the day. that the Lord, has made. the Lord has made. I will grumble and no, I, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Set your day up. Yeah. Set your day up. To, to, for God to move in your life. Set your day up with the Word of God. Speak the Word only. And that Word will cut every negative thing out of your life. That Word will put you in a place where you want to be. Glory to God. Did you receive it today? Praise God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we honor you this morning and we thank you, Father God, that you're moving amongst us, Lord. And Father, that you're here and and, you know, Father, your word says that it's so important for us to confess your word. And the most important confession is the lordship of Jesus Christ. And in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says if we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our hearts that he was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. So if that's you today and, you're, and, and you know you need Jesus. Either you know you need to rededicate your life to God because you've kind of went off the, the, the path of righteousness. You're on that destructive road and you're ready to get on that path of righteousness by recommitting or that you never made a solid uh, uh, dedication to the Lord Jesus. Today is the day, the day of salvation. Just say this after me and mean it in your heart. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe he was raised from the dead and he's seated at the right hand of the Father God. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. And Heavenly Father, fill me with the fullness of your spirit. If you pray that prayer, we believe you got born again. Praise God.